This is a special podcast presentation from 700WLW.com. This is Casey Boland On Demand. Casey Boland joining me of Hanghold Capital Management. And uh, Casey, taking a look at Wall Street analysts. You know, of course, they can't get it right all the time, and we know they don't. But an interesting point here, you say prior to uh, 2015, there was a long stretch there where some of the least popular stocks or least recommended actually fared extremely well. Yeah, for a seven-year stretch prior to 2015, had you invested in the 10 stocks that Wall Street analysts liked the least for the upcoming calendar year, your returns would have been 170% versus 70% for the S&P 500 index. Yeah, the 70% by itself isn't bad, but 170, all right, how does this happen? Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. I think oftentimes uh, analysts, they really buy into the stocks that are doing well, and oftentimes they look at stocks that are underperforming, and they just don't show a lot of love. But this is not a new theory. There's a theory called the dogs of the Dow theory that's been around for a long period of time. And when I started back in the business back in 1991, this is a theory that you looked at the highest dividend-yielding stocks of the Dow Jones, and you invested in those. But, you know, I, I know people look and they say the word dog, it doesn't make you feel good when you buy a security with the name dog in it. Right. Well, think of it as running with the big dogs. Oh, exactly. That's a great way to think about it. And so you're buying share prices. They were down, which means their dividend yield was very, very high. And surprisingly, there's been many years where these stocks have done a great job and they've had pretty decent performance. It doesn't outperform every year, but it's had pretty reasonable results. But you're only picking from a limited number of stocks, correct? Yeah, I think that's the only limitation when you look at the dogs of the Dow, because, again, the Dow only has 30 stocks in it, so there's only so many you can choose from. There's another strategy that's been expanded that will choose from the highest yielding stocks in the 10 sectors of the S&P 500. So, again, you're buying value stocks, but within the S&P, so I think you're getting better diversification. But, yeah, it really does get back to oftentimes Wall Street really doesn't always get it right. Oftentimes the stocks that have really been beat up oftentimes rebound and do well, and you know what? Uh, Wall Street oftentimes, when they look at their sell ratings and their buy ratings, the buying percentage is just okay. 